Welcome along to Lamb Chops HQ. Don't worry, you've not clicked on the wrong video. This is not some seedy strip bar, despite what the LED lighting may be suggesting to you. And if it was a strip bar, you don't worry, you'll be able to ride and touch the beauties in my garage. This bike's been lent to me by Wheels Motorcycles. So first of all, massive thanks to Wheels Motorcycles for lending me this machine. This is a bike I've been really, really excited about sort of riding since I saw the initial sort of press release photos for this machine. I think Moto Guzzi have absolutely nailed the sports touring styling on this bike. But the big question is, what is it like to ride on the UK roads? It's two degrees out there today. We've got frost, we've got ice. have got to be really, really careful, but I can't wait. I've got to ride this machine. So grab yourself something warm to drink. I'm going to go and kit up and also have a hot beverage before going out on the streets and testing this bike out. Jopsy, roll the intro. Jumping aboard and turning it on, you're greeted with that uh, Moto Guzzi splash screen. It's the same screen, this, which is on the, the RS660, the new Tuono. Same with all the switch gear, exactly the same switch gear that's on the RS660, Tuono, RSV4, cruise control, you know, it's that switch gear. There's no buttons just to turn the, you know, put the screen up and down and stuff. You've got to find it in the menu there. Um, it's all pretty well laid out, though. I like that layout if things aren't a little bit small, but um, very classy looking. Right, let's fire her. Just that little bit of rock then, you get that bit of classic Moto Guzzi rock. It is pretty cold, the engine. See that, you've got that little bit of rock still. They have added sort of balancing shaft and reduced the inertia in the engine by 50% compared to sort of the normal Moto Guzzi engines, but sounds wonderful, absolutely wonderful. I can't see, I've completely steamed up. Let's go! <laughs> Thank you! She likes my motorcycle. The riding position, because they've designed this for sort of a really low seat height, I think it's 810, 815 millimetres, I, I, the legs feel a little bit cramped. I'm six foot two, 20 stone, so most of you will know all these facts, but it's a little bit tight in the leg, a little bit. And the seat, they do three other, they do a shorter seat, a, a, you know, a, a raised seat or the standard seat. I'd want the raised seat, I think, just to give me a little bit more in the leg because it's really, really low. Afternoon, sir. And uh, yeah, it feels a little bit, say tight, but a tiny little bit tight, maybe. The seat also feels a little bit hard as well. A little tiny bit hard with my big bottom, but I'm not too, I mean, I'm talking for a touring bike, you know, if, it's, if I was on a sports bike, I'd be absolutely over the moon with it. The engine on this machine is all brand new. All brand new. It was designed by the same people who designed the original RSV4 engine so that beautiful v4 so what motor guzzi have done you know they've, they've lent back on the experience they've got in aprilia to sort of bring some real sporty nature to this machine so they, they've gone to aprilia those aprilia engineers have designed this engine so it's even got finger followers for the cams so you know it's incredible i mean that is normally only reserved for real performance engines and it's got it on this on this the engine is much more compact it's four inches shorter. They've actually moved the cylinders. So, you know, rather than having the exhaust out the front, they're out the sides. I'll show you that a bit more on the walk around. But, I mean, it's a lot of development work happened on this engine. First ever water, water cooled Moto Guzzi. First ever Moto Guzzi with rider aids. First ever Moto Guzzi with a TFT screen. You know, this, this bike has brought Moto Guzzi into the 21st century. I know the V85 was very good, but that was very much built on the old technology. Now, this has got an IMU, you know, all of those modern add-ons, you know. It's, uh, I think this is going to be a fantastic bike for Moto Guzzi. I have ridden quite a lot of Moto Guzzi's. I've more or less ridden everything in the range 
I actually did a, an Italian Tuscany tour with Motor Guzzi a few years ago and I rode all of the bikes including a lot of the big cruisers and stuff so I'll put a link to that video because that was a few years ago a lot of you may not have seen that trip around Italy eating fine Italian food riding fine Italian motorcycles that was a hell of a trip but on the UK roads on this bike this feels a million miles away from some of those other older motor good seers I've ridden this feels it's a little bit a little bit vibey tiny bit I mean, I think you've—I think they'd call it character, wouldn't they? It's got a few little vibes to it. You can feel it through the seat, through the bars. I mean, you can—you can feel it. But is it similar to, like, let's say, the BMW Boxer engine? Perhaps, perhaps a little bit more vibey than a BMW Boxer engine, as a comparison. But still, I could part with it. It does bring a bit of character, I suppose. And as you can see, as I'm on the motorway. I've got the little wingies pop out here. Um, I've set this so the wings will come out. Normally they only come out in the touring mode. I've set it to come out when you go over 50 in the sports mode. So if I drop it down below 50, these little suckers should go in again. He says, I don't know how long they take to reset. But this bike has active aero. Sorry, I've got a lorry behind me now. I'm not going to mess about with lorries. This bike has active aero. So... That is designed just to keep a little bit of the cold air off and rain and weather off of your body. And you know what? On the top of my legs, because it's only eight degrees today, I've really noticed those popping out. You know, a lot of people when they tested this in Italy said, oh, you know, we can't really notice the difference. But I tell you, it's in eight degrees today, I've noticed those pop out and reduced a little bit of wind around my sort of belly, top of my, top of my thighs is where I noticed it. So it may be the difference between having wet thighs and dry thighs. I mean, it's got a lot of that old school Moto Guzzi feel to it. I mean, it is a little bit vibey. As I mentioned, you know, it's not super smooth. You know, so you've got a little bit of vibes, a little bit of character. I mean, I don't like calling vibrating engines, you know, characterful. It is more vibey than the Boxer engine, as I said, but it's still beautiful. You know, Instagram loads of power i mean it's only 115 horsepower this bike you know it's not massively powerful 105 newton meters of torque so a decent amount of grunt but you know it's not super fast it's it's a lot i think the bmw r1250 rs is like 140 horsepower almost and more torque than this because that is a 1250 of course so it's got a bit more a bit more capacity but that's a more grunty more powerful engine but i don't know there's just something there is something very, very nice about this. And I think the Italians, they know how to do style, don't they? I think this spike has been styled beautifully. Oh, there we go. Look, they've gone down again now, the Active Aero. Active Aero! It's the first production bike ever to have Active Aero. Who would have thought Moto Guzzi would be the first manufacturer ever to bring a bike out with Active Aero? That seems almost bizarre. So here she is, that beautiful machine. So I'm actually recording this right, right by a little primary school. So <laughs> they're out in the playground. So I suddenly thought having a camera out around small children is probably not the best idea, but never mind that. <laughs> I'll get arrested in a minute. But here we are. This is the beautiful V100 Mandelo. The Nelson, the Nelson Mandelo. <laughs> so the first thing to point out on this machine is look at the paintwork pearlescent i don't know what the color this one is but it's it's absolutely beautiful in that white it reminds me of a, a great white shark a little bit a bit of a shark profile to it these are the aero we mentioned so these will pop out at whatever speed you want that is that front end with the little leds and it actually has some cornering lights as well on there even on the standard version brembo calipers and those standard forks so then you know this is a non-electronically adjustable forks but there's no uh, rebound adjustment but you do have compression damping and preload damping at the top here there's the shaft drive what i do like about this but i love all this silver finish on everything uh, it is some sort of coating it's not bare aluminium finish it must be maybe Cerakote or I don't think it's powder coat because you can feel the the texture maybe it's just anodized but I do like this 
know, this, this silver finish on everything. Speaking of the engine, there it is. That is that new Moto Guzzi motor where the cylinders are, are rotated 90 degrees because normally on the older twins, you know, the exhaust would come out the front where this coming out the side here and then you've got obviously the inlet, the throttle bodies under the bike. So it gives it a cleaner look and uh, yeah, it does look clean. Look down here, it looks like there should have been a sight glass here to actually check the oil on this machine. Come to the other side. To actually check the oil, you've got the filler here with a dipstick. So uh, yeah, it's a dipstick filler affair. The screen on this bike is very nice, a real high clarity. I mean, it looks, the lettering is quite small, but it's very detailed and uh, yeah, I do like this screen. And then on the switch gear, you can go and just push to the right and then you can adjust your screen. Other nice little details, Motor Guzzi on the rear seat. Also the rear pillion seat is quite large, quite ample, as is the, you know, the rider's seat. Single-sided swinging arm with gold wheels on the standard one. The S doesn't have gold wheels. I don't know why the gold wheels are not on the S version, but you only get the gold wheels on the standard. I'm not sure why. Nice badge detailing. Also like these grills. Gives a bit more of that shark look. Another lovely little feature is you've got proper radial master cylinder and also a clutch radial slave cylinder as well so that's you know that's really unusual for a bike in this price range so there she is the beautiful moto guzzi mandalorian uh, nelson moto guzzi oh come on give me some of that active aero i'm getting cold here if we go to tour mode it should be on so there we go if you go to tour i think it opens a set when you can completely adjust that if you want that to come on at all, you can adjust what speed you want it to come on. I think anything over 60 is the highest setting or below 20, between 25 and 60 miles an hour. I think you can send into five mile an hour increments, you can set these to open up, open up at. And I'll tell you what, that definitely makes a difference. I tell you now, with those open, it makes a difference to how much, how warm your legs are and my lower belly. That they do do something, and I can tell that because it's so damn cold today. They do have a purpose. It's not just gimmicky. Well, 100% gimmicky. It's perhaps a little bit gimmicky, but they do do something. Yeah, this, this bike is very, very nice, actually. I don't know, you, you feel cool riding it. It's, it looks special, you know. I think this is going to do very, very well for Moto Guzzi this year. And this isn't even the top of the range one, this is just the base one and it's lovely. I'm not sure if heated grips are an option on the standard bike, because on a touring machine you want heated grips, don't you? You really want heated grips on a touring bike. I'm not sure if they're an option. I suspect they are, but uh, I think I would be tempted to spend the extra 2,000. If you can afford it, if this is absolutely pushing your budget, 13,500 pounds, there's nothing wrong with this, believe me. But if you can afford the extra 2,000, I think with that electronically adjustable O-Lins and the heated grips and the quick shifter, I think it is, is a, a more complete package. And that is completely almost in line with the price of the BMW R1250 RS. The 1250 RS starts at this sort of money. And again, once you've added electronic suspension and all of the stuff you actually want, on the R50 RS, it's £100 more than the S version of this. So this has been very cleverly priced to comp compete directly with the BMW R1250 RS. And I will be doing a comparison review with Greg with this machine and the R1250 RS. It would have been happening this week, but unfortunately, because the R1250 RS has undergone some changes for 2023, BMW UK don't have any until March because it's a new bike coming in. Let's give it a little bit of workout, a bit of power. It sounds fabulous. Bloody goes as well, that feels pretty quick, you know. There's plenty of go there. You, you, it doesn't feel lacking on power, wow. And it sounds incredible. That engine sounds incredible, I love that sound. Oh yeah, she's not lacking, it, not lacking one little bit there. That feels quick. The engine is pretty flexible. I mean, if you do get it caught below 2,000 revs, it's a little bit lumpy, 
but anything above 2,000 revs, I mean that is now, that's 2,000 revs in fifth gear. There's a load of drive there, a load of drive. And it doesn't vibrate too much, you know. That, but they've got a balancing shaft in this, it's doing its job. I would say the suspension is a little bit firm. You know, it's definitely set on the sporty side, I would say, the suspension on this bike. So, um, I guess if, if you wanted this from, uh, to do more relaxed touring on, you actually may be better off getting the S version, because then at least you can put it in comfort mode. And I don't know how comfortable that Olin suspension goes. You know, it's not renowned for going particularly comfortable, is it? It is Olin's, it's all about performance, but... I don't know, I'd like to try it, but I, I can tell you, this, this standard one is set quite sporty. I mean, you may be able to adjust the preload, you may be able to wind a bit of that compression damping out of it as well, to make it be a bit less jarry as you go over the bumps. But, um, yeah, it's definitely on the sporty side, this. So there we are, my first ride on the new Motoguzzi V100 Mandelo. I mean, it's um, it's a really nice bit of kit, this. I mean, it's not ideal conditions today. It's pretty filthy and dangerous today, to be honest. I've got to be very, very careful, so I certainly can't test the handling. But we've had a little bit of a go on the throttle, and it's quick enough, you know. It's got a lot of potential, this bike, a load of potential. It certainly lived up to the expectations I had for this bike. I mean, it got some wonderful reviews, you know, out in Italy. And even today, where it's completely hideously, hideously cold and dangerous out, it's still bringing a smile to my face. I think Motor, Motor Guzzi, or you know, Piaggio, let's call it, have really gone to town on this bike to make something different you know it's hard to be different this day and age isn't it and I think they've succeeded they've brought out something which is a little bit different a little bit different in this market in general not just from Ota Goodsy this is a little bit different humongous humongous thank you to Wheels Motorcycles for dropping this down to me I mean this is their demonstrator so if you want to test ride one of these get on the phone to Wheels put yourself in um, you've got to ride one of these, this is brilliant, and they're running this over the winter, so you can go out in the winter and test ride this machine if you're thinking of getting a new bike this year and you don't know what you want. So um, yeah, contact details below for wheels, give them a ring, send them some love and tell them the chop sent you. So I will be back out on this bike once more before she goes back to wheels motorcycles and hopefully we may get a dry day, we may, we can pray, we may get a, dry, a, a day when the roads dry out and we can throw it around a little bit. But I think with that sporty feeling suspension, I think it's gonna handle really, really rather nicely. But uh, there we go, thanks for watching guys, as always. And I'll see you in the next one. This is power level one, which is full power. <laughs> I could do that all day. What have you done here? <laughs> I told you I was scared back there. I've never dropped a bike before in my life. I've just dropped my H2. Oh! Backfire! That's it! That's it! <laughs> Listen to me. Oh, <laughs>